Hi, I'm Billy Whittlesey, and I'll be overviewing the genre we know as slashers. So, slashers are perhaps the most notable subgenre coming out of the broad category of horror movies, and when we think of slasher movies, we all have at least one movie that comes to mind. And whether that movie be Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, there are a couple binding factors that help define the genre in general. This brings me to my first question. What is a slasher? Although the term is used loosely, slashers usually involve a group of people, oftentimes teenagers, that are being hunted or tormented by a killer wielding a bladed weapon of some kind. Many consider Psycho by Alfred Hitchcock to be one of the first slashers because of the crazed antagonist's use of a kitchen knife when committing his murders. His obsession with his mother and stunted sexual perception make him the perfect Freudian outsider to scare an American audience. And although slashers are thought of as a uniquely American genre, it shares many similarities to the Italian genre of filmmaking called giallo, which literally means yellow in Italian. This is a reference to the yellow-paged crime thrillers that were popular in Italy in the 70s. Directors like Dario Argento and Mario Bava are thought of as direct early influences of the American slasher. Giallo films in the 70s and 80s incorporate high fashion, calculated killers, and conventionally attractive female protagonists to create complexity in a narrative that would otherwise be described as trouble in paradise. With creative editing and special effects, these lower budget Italian films made a killing seem very visually pleasing while still remaining gripping and terrifying. The Vietnam War ushered in a multitude of countercultural themes that influenced all of American media in general. With the election of Ronald Reagan as president, Americans were politically split between the conventionally Christian right and a more liberal anti-war youth. Hollywood recognized the rebellious nature of American youth and their experiences with desensitized, televised violence, and new slashes could serve as an outlet for this rebellion and violence. While Christian parents abhorred violence on screen, their children formed a morbid curiosity, and naturally, there was an affinity between the youth and slasher films. A common trope in slasher films is the use of honoring some kind of killing anniversary or killing pact. At some point, the killer was wronged by an uncaring society and regular killings served to perpetuate their revenge. The most likely explanation for this culturally would be that the American youth felt wronged for being drafted into a war that wasn't theirs while they were still children. Another common trope is the final girl trope, in which a young woman is left as the final victim out of the group of tormented youth. She has witnessed all the violence up to that point and serves as a convenient vessel for terror, and because this character is usually a virgin, American audiences see her as an unlikely hero that puts an end to the killings. This allows for some sexually disturbed themes to play into the general eeriness slashers wish to produce. And although rooted in misogyny, this role serves to represent a character the audience can use as a vessel to experience that terror and violence from a secondary viewpoint. The best example of this is seen in the 1974 low-budget masterpiece, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. One of the main characters, Sally, witnesses the murders of all her friends at the hands of an inbred, mentally ill family of men in rural Texas. After being chased by a chainsaw-wielding giant named Leatherface, she narrowly escapes death, yet is certainly left scarred by her experience. We can see that example here.
Whether this represents how the youth felt after narrowly escaping the Vietnam draft, or simply witnessing all the televised violence that the news would show of it, it served as a simple way to end a film that would satisfy most audiences' needs. After the 80s and early 90s, a more modern version of slashers were popularized and can be described as neo-slashers. Series like Scream were popular during the Bush administration as another wave of conservatism was opposed by the American youth. U.S.-led wars in foreign countries always seemed to boost the popularity of slasher violence. Slasher films continue to be popular to this day, and the only changes that are really being made are ones that are technological. That was a general overview of slasher films, and I hope you learned something. Thanks.